precursors. Signals on an oscilloscope are typically plotted out as voltage over time. The x-axis is time, and the y-axis is voltage. It's often useful to measure specific points on a waveform for analysis and troubleshooting. This can easily be done by using cursors. There are two sets of cursors available, one for the x-axis and another for the y-axis, and each set is labeled A and B. Using the A and B cursors together, you'll be able to measure the differences in time and voltage along a waveform. There are three cursor modes available. The first mode is manual. Manual cursors will allow you to position cursors anywhere along the waveform to make measurements. The second mode is track. In track mode, the cursors will automatically position themselves or track as the waveform changes. The third mode is auto. The auto cursor mode is associated with auto measurements. Normally when auto measurements are made, the cursors are not shown. Enabling cursor auto mode will show these cursors. Let's try them out. Here we have a 1 MHz uh, sine wave being displayed on the scope. To select manual mode, push the cursor button and select manual. So besides cursors showing up on the screen, you'll notice several readouts in the top left corner of the display. These readouts show the cursor position reference to the trigger point and ground. The select button allows you to change uh, cursors. So we can go from X cursors to Y cursors. We have our source, channel 1. Here we have cursor A, currently at 800 nanoseconds. And we can change that now that it's highlighted. For example, we can bring it over to the peak of our sine wave. And then go to cursor B and take it to the next peak. Now you see that we have one microsecond between cursors. So that agrees with our one um, megahertz uh, sine wave. You can also select cursor A, B, where now you can change uh, cursor positions in unison. These same operations can be done in the Y axis. So we can select Y. Source is still channel 1. Our cursor A, we can get that adjusted down to the bottom peak of the signal for cursor B. And, and uh, cursor A will take that to the top peak. So now you see we have about a 5-volt peak-to-peak signal. Now let's go to tracking mode. As before, we have two vertical lines indicating the x-axis cursors, but the y-axis cursors have been replaced by these markers. They'll automatically track as the waveform changes. In this case, we have a sine wave that is changing frequency. And as the waveform moves through the x-axis cursor, the y-axis marker tracks the waveform and shows the voltage at the intersection. This nicely saves time by not requiring you to manually place the cursor. Now let's go to auto mode. You'll notice that there are no cursors displayed when we do this. Since auto mode works with auto measurements, we have to choose a measurement first, and then the cursors will appear. For this example, let's choose frequency and peak to peak.
Now the cursors appear on the screen and show positions used for the measurement. Verifying time relationships and voltage levels are important to your circuit designs. Using the built-in cursor measurements will greatly simplify this task.